All right, welcome everybody. So uh, this is going to be a live event. Uh, we're doing a special event here with uh, Moby. You guys may know him uh, in the uh, Discord chat room here at Bookmap, uh, as well as uh, Dove. Uh, and it's a discussion here. Uh, some of the uh, trading methods that uh, Moby takes a look at, uh, how he, um, especially um, uh, some of the, um, uh, he, he, he trades mostly some of the extended trading hours. Uh, he's uh, located in Western Australia, so uh, he's up uh, and uh, trading uh, uh, the uh, uh, Asian, London, and then some of the uh, uh, New York session as well in the morning at, at least, right, Moby? Yes, and you've got your daylight saving coming up, so I'll extend my hours a bit more, just change my schedule around a bit for that. Yeah, yeah. Only yeah. About three weeks away from that. Yeah, that's pretty good. You get to trade all three sessions. So, uh, <laughs> um, uh, anyway, let's go through the risk disclosure here. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, Moby also has a, a really um, unique way of looking at the um, uh, sweeps indicator. In fact, he was um, instrumental in uh, bringing that uh, uh, indicator about. Uh, it was actually part of the absorption indicator to begin with, and uh, he wanted it split out uh, into two different indicators uh, so that uh, you could look at uh, multiple price levels on the sweep, uh, and he uses it uh, extensively. You can see in his tweets, etc. So anyway, general disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. The risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. So Moby, you can see my screen. Uh, if you want to take it uh, and uh, you want to start uh, projecting, and then I'll share your screen to everybody. Sure, I'm going to just share. I'll just share the um, the book map window. Um, I've got it on NQ because it's a lot more active right now than the ES. I mean, I've got three instruments there. I've got ES. NQ and then I've got the, the DX feed version. Unfortunately, the DX feed version doesn't work with a couple of the add-ons that that I uh, that I really like. There's a brand new add-on that we're all beta testing this week, which is the one that Vadim has just released called Liquidity Markers. So if I circle around that, it's um, it's it's rather useful in the ETH session because you can see the manipulation. So if you zoom out quite a long way, you can see um, normally about 30 points up and 30 points down where they're controlling the market from, and by them I mean the market makers. Um, it's also nice if we scroll back, let's find, yeah, and then we zoom you know, here. Well, you get some big liquidity changes here, and you can see they added above and took um, they, and um, removed liquidity just below. When you get multiple instances of that, it normally means um, we're about to move. Now, it's normally a period of distribution, accumulation, whatever you want to call it, but it's normally we're about to have a decent move. And you can see here, bang, that was um, quite a, a pretty large move of, I think, 20 odd points for a volatile market. That's enough to make your day. So, so, so that, that's one of the reasons why I quite like that liquidity marker. I've been giving Vadim some feedback this week, but yeah, that's, um, I that's think great. yeah, it's 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 already you know even without any improvement, I'll, I'll stop um, my cursor going like that. Um, without any additional improvements, and there are some that I think you can do to it. It's pretty good off the bat. So, uh, can you uh, uh, you know? I have not been in the loop on this. Uh, we're, you know, beta testing it. You're a beta tester in here, so um, it's showing pulled and added. Is that correct? Yeah. Let's let's have a look at the um, the settings. Why don't we? Um, so it's kind of like the liquidity tracker in essence, but it's just on the chart. Yeah. It's just it's just a. Can you see my settings there, or does that not appear? Yeah. I don't. I don't see them. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll just um, I'll get rid of the settings. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, I've got it so that. Um, within, a, within a screen, and I can zoom in and out, the maximum number of liquidity markings it will have is 10. So if I zoom out, it'll, uh, it'll aggregate and make bigger markings. If I zoom in, um, 
you get small markings, but there's a minimum filter there of 10 that I've set. Um, it's got an, an ability to look at the recent price action and give you a good approximation of what that minimum should be. Um, but I found that in this kind of relatively choppy market, about 10 in NASDAQ is very good. In ES, not, I mean, it's, it's there, but I, I'd say it would be a lot more useful in RTH in the New York session than it would be in, um, in the, um, the ETH session. I mean, yeah. it can be useful. Just about there, you could, uh, you could see them begin to add, and they added around, they, were, they added quite a long way below. So you can, it, it adds text at the level, the price level, they added liquidity. So here, yeah. on this one, that is about 91, and the price was at that time, 94 and a half, 95. So they added it four points below. And even though that was a good four points or 16 price levels away, it was significant enough to contribute to the movement. I'm not, I'm not going to say it moved the, uh, the market, but it would have contributed. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's just a push. Yeah. So a push yeah. or a pull, depending yeah. on what they do. So uh, I'm finding it useful. Um, at the moment, uh, as I said a little bit of time ago, we're in a very volatile market um, because of what's going on in Eastern Europe. So um, uh, I wouldn't call this a particularly normal week. In fact, this year has not been a particularly normal year. It's normally quite dull. Uh, and the main reason you would trade NASDAQ in ETH is because you'd get some activity rather than ES, which would not move much at all. But at the moment, you know, um, we... You can, you can see some of these moves in ES, so, yeah, they're plenty big enough. Um, and if I just, I, I keep um, live statistics on, on how the market's moving. So um, today, Lobex range for ES is 43.25 points. That's since the Asian Open and NASDAQ 170.25 points. So you could, you could, um, I, I'll, I'll have been focusing more on NASDAQ because of um, the kind of moves I get when it's a little bit more dull. Um, but it, yeah, it's perfectly okay to trade ES in this kind of environment. And um, yeah, I also track relative volume. Uh, I calculate all these statistics live. Uh, rel for me, relative volume is how is today's session up till this minute, you know, from 1800 New York till this current minute, which um, your time I think is... 3 a.m. ish. Um, it's 117%. So I know that vis a vis the last 10 trading days, we're active enough to get decent moves. That's not to say that we won't get huge moves when we've got low relative volume. It just means that we've normally got enough activity both for a move and to get in and out relatively safely. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff, Moby. So what were you looking at earlier in the NASDAQ, uh, uh, kind of overall structure? Yeah, um, I have to zoom out because you, you can't see this action until I zoom out. I have to drag it back. So this is the London Open, um, 3 a.m. New York time. But if I go back, and zoom out. We, we had this area here, you can see some liquidity there, which was the wall um, that it could not breach at the time. And you had, I'd call it a quadruple top, it's some of it's hidden by this liquidity marker, that's one of the downsides of it. it hasn't got the same transparency um, the stop add-on has. But it was on a very small time frame, and I'm saying you probably need to look at the, the 15 seconds or 30 seconds chart to see it, it was a quadruple top. Um, and as you know, Bruce, the more times you hit something, eventually you're going to come back and break through it. You know, it's just too tempting for them to leave it alone because there are going to be some stops that the sellers will have had just above here. So that was left there at about 63.75. Um, and then for the next hour and a half, it pushed down. So all the buyers that were up there would have been stopped out because it did push down below 30. And then we got down to 28. And then right at the London Open, it um, zoom all the way out in the space of a couple of seconds. No, I think I zoomed out too much, so let's vertically zoom. Okay, yeah, so London Open is 
3 a.m. New York time, that line there. And we were down here at 27 and a half. And so in the space of um, 2.58, two minutes, three minutes, I'd say we went from 28 all the way up to 65. So that's a 37 point. And their aim all the time was most likely the, um, the seller stops above 64. They didn't find many. If they'd found many, it, should have sh it would probably have shot up quite a long way. But, yep. Yeah, uh, when, the point when, is that... When, yeah, sorry, go, go, go ahead. Make, make, I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt but, you. But Yeah, no, no, the point is that um, a lot of ETH is about times a day. Uh, and you can, you can have huge periods, minutes, hours, etc., where it's just chop city or dull. Um, but there are particular times of day, uh, and there are, you, know, you can have lots of speculation about why those times of day are important. It could be because large institutions start their algos at those precise times or roughly those times. Um, but the, but it, it's the times of day that can be the most important in ETH. I, I know, obviously, that they're important in RTH as well, like 10 a.m. New York time tends to be a little bit more bearish than 9.30. Um, but um, in ETH, it can be absolutely critical. You know, uh, if, if you're trading London, you want to be there at least 20 minutes before it opens. Mm -hmm. And you want to have done all your homework and all your, your thoughts or all your, all your possible theories um, about what might happen you know, at least five, 10 minutes before London. Wow. Yeah, so I guess it gets is pretty pretty quick moving right around then, and everyone's uh, positioning themselves and uh, uh, going for those stops and uh, figuring out where where they're going to go for the day. Yeah, um, I think David, um, sadly not on this call, uh, um, in in his webinar last year, he would have described you know a couple of the key levels around the London Open. One being the ramp up to settlement if Asia has been choppy or has gone down a little bit. Um, that 37 point move we just saw, that's very, very mild. Like, you know, if we were in a bullish market and, and Asia just chopped around and we were actually well below settlement, you know, it's, it's quite often the case that they will ramp it 100 points. So you'll think, ah, oh, they're just going to tag settlement and then they'll keep going for another 90 points. <laughs> so the, so the, um, the worst thing you can do is to fade a move that's just starting around London. Uh, you can't predict what they might do. They might do absolutely nothing for ten minutes, and then the, and then they'll start the move. Yeah, yeah, it it, it really is then uh, about the uh, when some of these larger players are are ready to move. Yeah, exactly. Um, you can't move market. I can't move market. But all we can do is try and spot their coattails. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so uh, I mean, do you do you um. Um, I mean, you, you're using this uh, sweeps indicator a lot. Um, I'm just kind of curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should go and look at some of the sweeps. Yeah, because I think there was one before that ramp up that was um, worth looking at. Uh, that's not a good example, but I think it's the last one. Um, yeah, this one here, which wasn't actually the low of this swing. These, um, yeah, there's one other thing I should say about NASDAQ as well in terms of, I mean, maybe I should talk about how I set bookmap up because it, it, this is set up for NASDAQ and ETH. So, so a lot of people would do this very differently to me and this is just um, the way I perceive NASDAQ. So one of the things I do here is I have the trade dots, not the delta dots. So one of the things I'm looking for with those sweeps is a big dot, i.e. a big trade transaction, which in NASDAQ's case is almost certainly going to be lots and lots and lots of individual contracts. You know, so if you, if, if you were on a, a, a different platform where they broke down that dot, it would probably say one plus one plus one 30 times over, and then it would be a volume of oh, no, 115 times over, and you get a volume of 115. Um, so one of the, I mean, one of the, um, yeah, one of the things you you can look at in a dull market uh, or a range bound market is fading these sweeps. And again, um, full caveats about what kind of market we're in at the moment. Uh, if I say this market is choppy, that that's purely historical, and it could it could trend 
30 seconds after I say it. So disregard anything I say about what the market may do in the future. Um, but one of the things that, that they tend to do in, in NASDAQ, um, and Scott Portuni is an, another person I'd advocate listening to on, the, on this subject, is they will sweep down um, to the area where they think they can get people offside. So here, they're sweeping down. So um, what the algos tend to look for is lots of new sellers that join in this section here. Uh, and you'll get one big, big trade dot around here. Normally, it's right down towards the end of, of the, the big sweep down. I call this move a sweep down because it was relatively quick, especially this is like a vertical move down, that bit there. Um, and then you'd have, hopefully, in this setting of book map, you'd have identifiable large trades here. You've got two big circles, or you've got one big circle, if I zoom out, uh, volume of 171. And I, I'm now just going to basically quote the theory of Scott Porcini. I'm not going to say it. I invented this. This is, this is his theory. And uh, I think it proves out quite well in a lot of markets. Again, it's not a 100% theory. It's just one that has a bit of edge over time. Um, you'll, you'll have this level here, which effectively you can call one large transaction of 100 or so, and that will become the over or underline. Uh, and, and the idea of the Argos is that they hope that they get as many sellers south of that line as possible. And that's the idea here to have delta on this column to show the level of, of sellers that might be trapped. And then once we have got back above this line, then they can use that fuel to ramp it as high as they, they want to ramp it. Um, being NASDAQ, nothing is precise. It's very thin and very choppy. So if we said, for example, this trade was, was at 14, 2, 3, 4, 25, uh, that means you've got a zone of two, three, four, five points, especially in this chop, that that is the over or under line. So it's an over or under zone, and and um, once you're past that zone, then it can then it can move. Does does that explain part of it? Uh, very very clearly, uh, re really nicely put. Um, uh, just uh, yeah, hunting for so, it, yeah, getting so people sweeps, on the, the hook. Sweeps are all about yeah, the sweeps um, are lots of things. You know, they, they can be a climax. They can be just a quick dip for fuel to get people offside. Um, they can be a kickoff, an initiation um, on, on a swing. So, you know, it's, it's with anything in trading, yeah, you cannot say that it means this thing every single time. Right, right. You so where where I mean I'm just kind of curious like um how many are you looking for um in kind of the relative uh I obviously it's going to you know each day or uh, uh the session or the timing is going to matter uh each instrument um but uh, just kind of in general like that's a pretty big sweep there to the upside Yeah it's uh, 169 um and we've got those liquidity areas and we can see the 95 liquidity has been there since 320, and the ones up above, particularly the 330, has been there hours. Um, yeah, uh, in NASDAQ, on, on, a, on a normal relative volume day, you're looking for anything above 25. I've got this set to 20 because I uh, don't mind my weird sounds. I've just got little algos that I've programmed that make funny noises. Um, it's, in a, it's on a different platform. Um, yeah, I, I programmed it to be twenty. To, to be twenty, this is programming within the um, the bookmap um, sweep add-on um, because I'm quite happy to see more than less. It, it also means that you know, as you, you as you zoom in, you you will see less, obviously, because they aggregate as you zoom out. You know, I mean, right. this one here, if we zoom in. At 169, well, I think it was 169, yet yeah, becomes a 22, a 75, and a 72. So, um, so now do you, I mean, um, in general, like, uh, uh, how are, are you always looking for them to get people on the hook going the wrong way uh, before turning? No, no, not at the moment, no, because. Um, 
We had that massive stock run from 27, 28 at the London Open. We know, um, because we just scrolled back and we saw the Delta, in fact, you can see the Delta even on this screen here, at the bottom there is very red, i.e. sellers trapped. So uh, right now, um, I'm thinking, especially since we've gone through the first 30 minutes and, and we haven't really had a, we haven't had a huge move, not by London standards yet. Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking we, you know, we may get a directional play. So I'm not looking for them to get offside. I'm also, you know, aware because I've been around for the last few hours that this level up here, 330, has been there a long time. And regardless of whether we actually get to it or not, it's an attraction for them. Um, that you know, I think they've hit uh, 299 or 298. Maybe once or twice, I have to go to my one minute chart, five minute chart to have a look how many times they've hit it. Have a look. Yeah, you know, on the on the five minute, it looks like they have hit 299 on three separate bars. So again, I'm thinking there could well be stops, um, sellers stops above 299, and they're going to get filled um, because you've got all that liquidity sitting there at 300. So at the moment, um, if I see those sweeps up, I, I think it's just momentum towards the the attraction of those stops above. Yeah. Okay. I see. So that. And it, it, but, but by the same token, if we get a sweep down, I'm thinking, yeah, the, the, uh, the probability is that most likely they're putting offside the sellers. You know, I, the sweep down at this point, you know, especially since we're getting quite close. Um, would be really nice to just catch a few more sellers. You know, give you an extra bit of, extra couple of um, leases or gallons in your tank to, to take you through 300. Right, right. So, but on this, for the sweep down right now, where would you look for that sweep? Like just underneath the, the this current range here, small range or like the bigger range? Yeah, no, no. I mean, yeah, I'd look at the um, delta across on that column here. So, I'd look, you know, I'd look at that delta there and see, you know, you, with Nasdaq, again, with, with any market, and with the way that I would program the algos if I was them, you're looking for it to, or for them to be as, to do the nastiest thing possible because then they get the most money for their stops. You know, if they're doing a stop run, they want to be paid well. Um, so I'm thinking that is a nice kind of zone. And then I have. I have some like miniature volume profiles I'll go and have a quick look at to see if there are many sellers down there or, or also if there are any you know, decent sized trades that have come up on a recon tape, a reconstructed tape. Um, but at this stage, I mean, you've, you've also got to be aware that they may not need any more fuel. You know, they've got so much fuel, plus they're just chopping here, which, you know, I mean, whatever phrase you want to use, you know, they're coiling, they're forming a tight range, you know, you, you could, it's not something I'm very good at using uh, the book map drawing tools, but we could try and draw one. Here we go. You know, they're, 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 um, they're coiling there. So every, every seller they get there is fuel. Right, right. So, so, uh, okay. So un understood. So, uh, just um, trying to clarify the distinction that you're looking for between range bound and um, uh, directional. Uh, yeah, no, right now, I mean, I think we, we've got a direction. Um, I think the, the direction on, or the short term direction, certainly on the one minute, and the five minute is up. Um, and yeah, I mean, I look at about five different time frames. Uh, what, what were we talking about? We we're talking about them trying to stop sweep under 72 so um yeah maybe they're going to do exactly what you want them to do bruce yeah yeah no, <laughs> look, look, looks probably. like it yeah you're gonna demo it uh yeah. perfectly here yeah but we haven't had this week we have, at the moment we've got you can see the transparent icons for the stops there so you can see we've only had three stops so three mbo stops so that's you know if you're looking for a sweep you're looking for something a little bit more visible something fast and with a nice sweep icon yeah. and i wouldn't call that a sweep And we, we also know that if, if you've got buyers at this level, 73, 74, their stops are going to be a little way under. So if there was a sweep that got those stops, we'd see a really fast little move, you know, 
somewhere between five and ten points from where they were all situated or roughly situated. But uh, yeah, Bruce, we don't have to have a sweep every time. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm. It's, all, the, I'm... Uh, the, yeah, it's the beauty of the game we're playing. They'll they'll be different every single time. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm always curious about the uh, uh, just j exactly this scenario right now. Like, uh, you know, they they able to come down below below some of these swings, yet they haven't really triggered many stops yet. Uh, so no, no. So... But I'm looking. I'm looking across at the ES, and I think they've got some stops above above 407 on ES. So you just you think it's going to be so tempting they're not going to um, resist at some point, but. Um, the problem with ETH is it's a long, long, long session. So, you know, we were talking about resting liquidity, uh, and I could talk all day about the probability of certain resting liquidity being hit, but we're talking about probability that could take 12 hours to fill. Yeah, that's uh, and Unless you've got very deep pockets in NASDAQ, you could have your account blown way before um, you go anywhere near the resting liquidity if you're trying to hold for it. You know, um, but yeah, and it looks like we should trigger some stops here. If we um, zoom back out again, yeah, this little patch here, the buyers, should have given us a nice little sweep, but it didn't. Yeah, I love the way you're using the delta column. What I love about Bookmap, um, you know, I'm using a couple of other platforms, but what I love the most about one of, about this feature in Bookmap over those other platforms is the incredible speed with which you can zoom in and out horizontally and vertically. You know, you know whoever programmed that ability has just done a, a damn fine job. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Uh, I'm always amazed. Uh, there you go. There it is. There we go. That's the first one. So we've got a 60 sweep. And if we um, zoom vertically, you can see, by the way, the, the white, the whitish grey is a price line. That that was a vertical price line straight from 69.50 down to 65. So you know, for four and a half points, that's likely to have been a sweep. Yeah, yeah. So, but the, the truth is, it doesn't matter whether it isn't is a sweep or isn't a sweep. You know, it's, we've got the visual representation. Um, it's good enough for our purpose. And then you, you kind of wonder whether we're going to get the one-two punch as well. So if we are going to go up, you know, you, you have a one-two punch, you have a sweep, and then you have another sweep. Markets love one-two punches before they turn around. And then you have to think, am I reading this wrong? Or have we had a reversal right at... Uh, liquidity wall up at 290 and we could be going down for the next few hours that was a little mini stop run we just had there again they didn't find much they found five stops And it's a lot of money to spend to search for stops, and not many. Yeah, they have enormous pockets. Yeah, I mean, some of those algos that are switched on at about I don't know towards the half hour marks, towards the three thirty mark. Who knows when they switch them on? Um, they run by you know those giant German banks like Commerce Bank. So even if the main algo is running in the DAX the way that these correlations are, it's as if that algo is running in, in, in Q and ES at the same time. And that's more so in ETH than RTH. Oh, we've got a couple of people um, online with us now, haven't we? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So here they go. So I, I would imagine they're, they're probably getting ready here. To, to move it back up where did it go moby like if you if you zoom out a little bit more like, uh, how far do they take it down hmm. interesting yeah they've got they've got some swing lows here so you could say that was a, a 
double bottom or a triple bottom, that kind of zone again, you know, or even a multiple bottom scenario there with NASDAQ because nothing's precise in NASDAQ. But, you know, I'm, I'd be quite surprised if they went all the way down there, but that's the thing about NASDAQ, always surprising you, <laughs> always making a fool of you if, you if you're not prepared to accept your stops. This level of um, heat map saturation that I've got, um, I'll just show you the difference here. So at the moment, I've got it set so I can see these bigger levels quite easily. I've got this column so I can see the, um, the curve, as I call it. And what I'm looking for in terms of liquidity of any interest, something in ETH over 30, 30 plus. So you've got a level of 43 there, but it's only just been put in 15, 20 minutes ago. So it's not what I'd call real resting liquidity or anything, but it's just of interest because we can see they added 22 there and that, that 22 with the liquidity marker contributed massively to pushing this thing down. Yeah. And I wonder if we zoom out, we can see any more pushing down. Yep. Oh, we could. There we go. Roughly the same time. Um, with thinner instruments like oil and NASDAQ, th their effect of a push, and by a push I mean adding to liquidity, can be pretty effective from miles away. It doesn't have to be very close to the market. It's big, yeah, because the total number of volume contracts in the ask and the bid are so much smaller than something like ES. Again, that's one of the great features of Bookmap that you you can scroll all the way out there and see where they added that one at fourteen three nine three or something. Oh, this is this is great, Moby. Just uh, uh, really really love the way you trade the the. Extended trading hours here. Um, well, yeah, right now I wouldn't be doing very much. I'd just be watching. <laughs> um, having a look at the trends, the one minute trend has definitely switched. But the five minute trend up is still intact. We shouldn't forget our friend. See what he's up to. Have you formed any view on resting um, icebergs in ETH? In ES? Not, not in the ETH. Um... I'll, I'll pay them more attention in ES than I would in NQ. Hmm. simply because you can manipulate a thinner market more easily. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. And, and because you get much bigger resting icebergs. I mean, that's not big. That's 14. You get much, much bigger ones than that in ES. But I think my view is that they form great targets. Yeah. Um, but that's about it. You know, like if we, if we were, you know, if we'd got in say there because we can see that there yeah we'd be in quite a bit of trouble better zoom out on ES and see how it's pushing down so that liquidity marker again is I like the clarity it gives so it gives you numbers right and you can equate those numbers to the depth column and the other thing you'll notice, and again, I, I haven't been using this on ES very long, you know, two or three days, you, you'll see the same numbers again and again and again. So you, you know it's a particular type or type of algo. Maybe you could give them names like pets. 
but you're going to see the same action again and again because they use the same sizes again and again. In fact, even on this screen, you've got very similar ones, 35, 36, 36, 35, 40, 40, 36. And you've got historical, in your replay, you've got this historical view of what happened every time they added 35 from way up above. So, you know, you can write detailed notes on on what that might do in a future similar market. Again, this is, you know, it's a brand new thing that we're beta testing this week, but um, yeah, this is the I most, like get simplicity. This is the most in-depth I've seen of it um, so far. I haven't really taken a look at it yet, but I really like that. That's a, that's a, a pretty interesting um, uh, idea, like the scene not so close to the market, but actually further away, um, because you might not really notice that. Um, as You're going to notice more in ETH because obviously it's going to be thinner. So if we get a max depth on this screen of 214, I've forgotten what is the current max depth in RTH at the moment? Is it about 600 or so? I, I don't know. <laughs> I imagine it's going to be at least three times that. But you can see, you know, sort of even in ES, you can move the market from quite far away in ETH. I doubt you could do it from that far in RTH. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you on that. I mean, a lot of the times we we see we see um, uh, you know some of that kind of um, uh, algorithmic uh, uh, phenomena that uh, it, it's much clearer to see in the uh, ETH just because uh, because there's just you know so much less going on, uh, and uh, yeah, they're they painfully stand out compared to like regular trading hours, it's like it's obscured by so much more uh, liquidity in there. Yeah. This is actually quite a nice action. I mean, if we were trading it, I mean, uh, where's our drawing tool? We've got really nice. Uh, really nice bear flag. I uh, wouldn't say there's any particular trigger to get that move down, but the, um, the price action is actually quite nice. You know, you can see the um, you can see the trend and the bear flag without having to draw it. Uh, we were talking about yeah the fact that some of these levels or the the stop runs or the resting liquidity up above you know are or can be useful but the work we are in a very long period of time in 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 um eth i mean we won't be on the um, we won't be on the air in about two hours time but you'll find one of those huge ramps you know, in either direction most likely up um in a couple of hours or so when they have their nice algos when the New York boys wake up. Again, you can't have an exact time, but you know roughly roughly when they're going to appear. And when they do appear, you stand out of the way or you just jump on their backs because you cannot fade them. I think it's one of the, um, one of the things you have to realize if you trade ETH and, and you trade a thin market, whether it's oil or NASDAQ, they can destroy your account in minutes if the, if you let them destroy it. So I've heard a lot of people talk about having very, very wide stops or no stops at all. Um, I would strongly advise against that in NASDAQ. And also, you know, I, I also believe that the micros are there for a reason, and that's to help us on risk management. Yeah. Looks like we're going back to that lowish area. Yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah, I'm surprised, but yeah, I mean, you just got to be aware that if they change direction, it can be rapid. 
I mean, that's that's what you were just describing. I, I found the same thing. I haven't really traded too much of the ETH, but um, my God, it, you know, it, it's like you said, they, they once, you know, if you want to ruin your account and you want to be stubborn, um, that's the place to be um, because uh, it just continues to go against you and go against you. And, and you just keep thinking, well, there's got to be a pullback. Um, and there's just not. Uh, it just uh, it just keeps going until you know the 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 um, whoever is creating that directional move is is finished. Yeah, and uh, one of the um, one of the games is um, the ramp will start at the London Open, and it won't end until the New York Open. So if you think you can fade or get back to break even when you're offsided, um, that's a long time to hold in very deep pockets. Yeah. So, I mean, what, what do you find is your kind of holding time, uh, typically, in the ETH? It, it varies dramatically. Um, on my, my normal kind of trade, I'm looking for 10 to 20 points. And you can get those 20 points in a few seconds, or it can take you 40 minutes or an hour. Um, on, um, I've been testing out futures on the micro nasdaq sorry not futures options mnq options options on futures um this week as well there was a particular level below the it was about 100 points below the market and i wanted to see what the maximum adverse excursion would be um and it, and it went it went 90 points against me first and then it went went right down it was that day that it went really really trended down and the maximum adverse excursion, I think it's a two multiplier on, on the um, options futures, was only $87. So I was about 90 points down for $87, which was quite amazing. <laughs> but, you know, that, that's the longest that I would do, and that would be via, a, via an options contract. Again, those options contracts have not been available very long. That's the ones on the micros. And you're talking about a 10-point spread as well. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, like the the and and how much volume they have on those. Uh, but the ten point spread and like if it's you know, it, it can be just uh, so um, uh, frustrating to see like uh, you got the right direction and everything and you're not getting any profit. Um, so you you lucked out on the one where it went against you, but uh, it really didn't go down. No, I didn't. I had a hundred dollar stop loss, so I was looking at it when it was eighty seven or eighty eight dollars down. I was expecting, and maybe it was hundred points down. Maybe it was only about eighty points down. I can't quite remember how far it was um, down, um, but it never got to the hundred point, the hundred dollars. So I'm, I I had a hundred dollars stop, hundred dollars um, target, and it got to the hundred dollars target before the hundred dollars stop. You know, because when it went down at the New York Open. It went down. Yeah, funny. I think it went down. You know, I could have held it for another hundred points because it, it kept going. But it was a test. You know, I, I was I was curious because we often see these things in ETH, and you can't be around for the whole ETH session. So when Bruce was when when you were saying that I, you know I could trade all three sessions, we're talking about concentration. Time span, uh, time span, and market activity. Um, I don't think anyone should really try and actively day trade for more than about two hours. Right, right. Yeah, yeah I, rec I recall yeah. that discussion. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There are too many things that go against you at that point: your concentration, your frustration, your patience, um, your over trading. All those things that come into play if you if you've been doing it too long, regardless of whether you've got a standing desk or a sitting desk. I think the best one I heard was somebody who had a trampoline under their desk, or <laughs> sorry, in their office. So they bounce around while they're looking at book map. So do you do you find yourself like doing like a two hour session, or and then kind of splitting it up, taking a break, coming back, or? You know, I, I'm doing a few, a few other things. I'm also quite active, so I do quite a few sports and stuff as well. Um, yeah, um, I mean, if I am doing a session in Asia, which is the dullest by far, 
I'll be doing, I'll be multitasking. So I'll be doing some programming at the same time. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, this session, the, the London Open, you can see why you have to be 100% focused um, when you're actually doing it because of the amount of damage you can do to yourself. So for the London one, typically um, you can expect them to start to have interesting moves when the Germans come on come aboard, which is one hour before London. Um, yeah, uh, I wouldn't really be able to trade it much past the one hour after London opened. I'm always amazed by Tom who can sit at his desk for eight hours. That, that amazes me. Yeah, yeah, and then and then talk for four, four and a half of them. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'll have. I'll feel like I've spoken a bit during this um, this call, but I don't think I'd get anywhere near through as many words as Tom Tom would have spoken yesterday or the day before or the day before. So we've got a little sweep there. So with this zoomed out picture, again, I don't advocate this because I don't advocate these really small moves, but in theory, you've got a small wall of resistance. You've got a sweep there. Uh, they sweep up to there and turn around at the resistance wall and they go straight back down again. So that is an example of the, the counter trend scalp or the counter um, uh, it's it's fading the sweep as as you called it the uh, one of the, the the things that I look at. But here we're talking about peanuts, so sixty four fifty. No, not complete peanuts, but the problem is you'd never got in there. So even if you'd got a market order, you'd been you'd be filled in around about sixty two and a half. Okay, maybe you would get ten points on this one, okay, because right, it looks like it wants to go down a little bit more. Yeah, so I mean, if you screw, if you scroll out at, or zoom the vertical, it's a better, um, better demonstration of the sweep. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So, if, that, if we just no, I don't seem to be able to grab the corners of this thing. I was trying to grab um, the rectangle to cover the sweep and the um, volume manipulation, or the liquidity manipulation. So so go go down and click on that that button there yeah the arrow button there yeah okay and then and then right click on the square oh, edit okay uh -huh. one no it doesn't matter yeah anyway it, um it, 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 you got to click again like you're in yeah there you go click that and then you can edit it yeah yeah right, yeah um Oh, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, <laughs> okay. uh, the thing to note about this one is that um, with the liquidity marker that I've seen this week, you see how they remove liquidity underneath. Yeah. You you often get the end of a micro swing where they re remove liquidity, so it's counterintuitive. You'd expect it won't turn around here because they've taken liquidity, so it'll go further down. If you get me, Bruce. Right. But a lot of the time. Um, that will be the exact end, and then they'll pump it up. So it so it's it's teasing another algo. Maybe this other algo thought, I'm going to take it from here, and I'm going to be filled at this level here, uh, and they remove it for that reason. But who knows? Yeah, I I, I know exactly what you mean. I, I've thought the same thing. Like, uh, um, you know, so oh well, the target's gone. So <laughs> you know, they're just going to um, uh, stop. We've had another little sweep here, so yeah, we can we can zoom right in and see the. So here we've got this resting iceberg, which 15 for, for Nasdaq. That's a decent size. You know, you can go back through ETH Globex, and you won't come across that many 15s. So one thought that crosses your mind is they're going to go and tag that and help partly fill that. But then you're going to get offside because uh, they're going to play with you. And there's always a danger that that 15 will just get cancelled. So that's what I was talking about earlier. My first reaction when I see those is lovely target. Um, but <laughs> I'll, I'll wait for a, a really good opportunity to get in before I go for that target. 
We're, right now we're at VWAP. Yeah, that was a nasty move down to VWAP. Yeah, it's, it's completely nasty. If you look what they've done since we got up to that liquidity, where is that liquidity wall that they hit up there? Okay, this is a decent wall because it's a double wall. And you could say it's a triple wall. Um, yeah, they've gone down a lot further than I thought. We're almost right back where they ramped it up from. They ramped it up from 28 at the London Open. And we're... Yeah, we're almost right down there. Yep, looks like we're going to go straight through there. That's the beauty of NASDAQ. You think they're about to do something and they do the absolute opposite. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we were looking for the directional move at that point, but uh, uh, clearly that's not happening. No, no. And I've been looking at book maps, so I have not had a look at um, the VIX or DAX in the last 20 minutes. Yeah, DAX is, yeah, I should notice the DAX turned at the same time and VIX turned up. Um, I pasted a screenshot of those two. It wouldn't appear in this window anyway, would it? No, it wouldn't. You just have to take my word for it. Um, it was at 3.40 that they turned this round on all those markets. So 3.40, which is there, that there. Uh, scroll in. Yeah, so that's the that, that's something that you always have to be aware of um, with the correlated markets and ETH. Some of the time, Nasdaq or ES could be leading. Sometimes it could be DAX leading. Sometimes it, you know you need to watch VIX closely. Sometimes um, I quite like that foreign exchange pair, the AUD JPY. You know, it's just. It's just a mathematical thing, but sometimes it's nice to see what that one's doing. Mm. Uh, I think FT71, who used to do webinars with you a few moons ago, he always loved the correlation with oil and ES and NASDAQ in the London session. So oil is another one I like to watch. Let's see, it's uh, one of those... Sorry. Oh, David, David is at asking... Um... Uh, well, well, finish your thought on oil. That's the, and it's an interesting um, uh, correlation during the London session. Uh, and then um, David has a question here for you. Cool, yeah. Um, correlations change. Um, they can change with for lots of reasons, including seasonality. Um, but there are times over the last few years where oil and ES in particular have been, you know, um, tick for tick or virtually tick for tick in the first couple of hours of London. So that's why, you, you know, you, you'd, you'd monitor it to see how that correlation was going. You know, you maybe do a mathematical cal calculation or whatever you would do to work out the current correlation. And then, um, yeah, you'd make sure you're watching those markets that affected this one uh, in this current cycle. How, how often do you use the correlations? I mean, uh... Uh, in your trade, oh, all the time. In ETH, you can't, you can't trade any of those markets alone. Um, some of the time, I'm, I, I've got both the bookmap windows open, but with ES and NQ because I like to watch the liquidity in both at the moment. I, I, I've, I've got this in a um, in a wider um, in a wider frame, so I could get all these columns in because because they're quite useful and it's certainly for talking about that it's certainly useful. Um, but across the rest of my two monitors, I have um, correlations everywhere. Which ones have been working for you of late? You can't predict which is going to lead which. You'd be surprised how many times NASDAQ leads. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and, and then you can't say, oh, the Nikkei isn't doing anything when NASDAQ is shooting up. You just have to ignore the Nikkei then. Um, yeah, there are times of the day. I mean, J Japan opens, has a pre-open at, at um, your time. I think it is 19.45, so quarter to eight, New York evening. Um, so I'll, I'll definitely have the Nikkei open then. Um, uh, then it's it. Then you you're likely to get a good move when it opens properly, which is 15 minutes later. 
Uh, and at that time of the day, I'd have some kind of risk asset on and um, oil and Nikkei. And you've got China another hour later. And China's one which loves to fake people out. So the first move in China will usually be the opposite of what it's going to do for the next three hours. Hmm. So China has got about three opens, you, even though it's basically one country these days. You've got Hong Kong, Shanghai, and the other one. You, you basically got um, on the hour, quarter past the hour, and on the half hour, there are three separate initiations of market activity. Uh, and, and you have to, I mean, you have to be prepared if you're trading that session to be around for all three of those, because any of those may give you the trade that you're looking for. And if you're looking for a particular reversal, then you'd probably wait till the, the third one, the half hour one, when all of China is open and they've got enough fuel. You know, the normal move would be to, to ramp up after they have got so many sellers offside in the previous two hours. It's a great one. I mean, when the ES and NQ were making all-time highs every single day, and that's not too long ago, it's less than a year ago, um, that 9.30 reversal was, was quite interesting. Yeah, that, that's... Again, when we say 9.30, we're not saying 9.30 or 9.31. We're talking sometime in that half-hour block. Oh, that's great to, to you know, you can see the streams uh, and the flows, uh, uh, <laughs> three different opens uh, in China. Yeah, the, the, the problem is we, we don't really get an instrument, so we have to, um, there are platforms, and I'm not going to go and advertise other platforms, there are platforms that give you contracts for difference, which equate to Shanghai, Hong Kong, and and any other ones. So you get almost live activity. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really hard. I mean, uh, I like watching the, the mini Nikkei, but you need so many data feeds that it's too hard to do in bookmap. Um, that's what, you know, it, it's easier to do, to have on, on a, you know, one platform which you dedicate to all your correlations and stuff. And to pay for the level two, depth for every single correlated instrument would be, you know, it's one of those things that as a trader, you've got to work out how far to stretch your dollar on certain things. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, we know we're at, um, I think we're at 80 minutes after London, aren't we? 80 minutes. Yeah. You want to do it for another 10 minutes? Or? Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it, it, this is this is uh, everybody in in here right now. Like, uh, this is our first test with uh, Moby, and uh, we just um, it was kind of unannounced. Uh, we just wanted to give it a dry run and and uh, and see how it goes. Uh, uh, and it's going great, uh, Moby. I'd I'd love for you to do this all all the time. Um, <laughs> if, 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 yeah. if your game, um, it's really good oh, stuff. Didn't we? We missed an aggregated sweep because we zoomed out. Well, you get a lovely double sweep there. You, I mean, I know the second one is actually above the, the first one, but it's like a double that one. Um, in fact, I think the second one is what you're talking about again, Bruce, this one, the dip, the dip for fuel. Yeah. That's the one that gets you offside. So you, it's going down, it's going down, all the way down there you think, oh my God, it's going to go down down to the center of the earth, right? Then they have this massive sweep, which was 57 MBOs or just try and find out how many of the other ones. It, it was it was huge, I think it was 93. It was actually, if you zoomed out, it went over 160. Um, and then so everybody's thinking, pull back, then it's going to go down further because you've got, you know, uh, liquidity targets, although anything at the round number, nobody retakes. Really I mean, well, I don't think you can take too seriously. The round numbers are just round numbers. So I don't care what liquidity they put there. I'm, I'm not going to believe it's resting. Um, but you'll, you'll have plenty of people thinking at this stage, there'll be a pullback and it'll go down further. So this is a really good sweep for them. They push it down, give you every indication that's vertically zoomed. They give you every indication it's going to keep going down to the liquidity levels down here and then it reverses on you 
And if you've got a 10 point stop, you're stopped out. If you've got a five point stop, you're obviously stopped out as well. Uh, I think um, a lot of stops of retail traders in NASDAQ are nice round numbers like five or 10. Yeah. And 10 in ETH would probably be the um, most likely. I'm always so anything, Yeah, anything you think that the algos can't program, of course they can. So all the volume profile stuff, we haven't talked about much volume profile stuff, but I do look at it. They can program. It's amazing what they can do. I mean, I, I've been looking at some of those big data platforms that, you, you know, you can now get hold of, certainly on the option sphere. It is amazing what those AIs can do. Sorry, Bruce, I, I cut you off. Oh, yeah. No, I'm uh, not at all. I'm Moby, I... I, I um... I'll get my feel with you, like uh, how how to uh, ask questions and and uh, uh, and whatnot. But uh, um, no, I'm always amazed, like how uh, the um, like you said in here that sweep, uh, that second sweep. I mean, you know, we've already stopped out a lot of people, or you know, um, uh, on the on the first sweep. Yet there's you know new sellers in here, and they're 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 exiting there. Um, uh, and um, um, or I, I'm sorry, like uh, you know, people people buying, and you get that that secondary sweep there, uh, and uh, you know now 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 they're getting the move, you know, um, but uh, uh, yeah, it, it's just an odd place for that to happen. Yet here it is; it's right in front of us. Yeah, odd for us, but odd not odd for them because they probably planned this well in advance. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, the, the, they'll have some game in mind about how far they'll let it drop before they want to turn before they want to turn it around. Uh, and I'm assuming that they can manipulate the Nasdaq very, very well in ETH. But, I mean, maybe we should zoom out and look at the liquidity markers there on that one. They're playing in the fifties around that. They've increased from the twenties and twenty fives we were looking at earlier. So I mean, I'd I'd love some analysis, but for me to have a look at all of these and say, effectively, they're the same, the same bank that's doing all of this movement up and down, up and down, up and down. Yeah, the fifty two kind of stands out. I mean, the fifty, who who knows? And now we were talking about that resting iceberg there yeah and remember how that was very tempting you know you're thinking oh i'll go for a long to tag it this will get me 10 points and how much trouble you would have been in so the, the resting iceberg was up at 54.50 and it went all the way down 30 points that would have taken everybody's um everybody's stop that was interested in that that could see it on the mbo data so it does make me feel often that they know that, um, or I think they know that every other algo can see the MBO data, and they know that retail people on some of those data feeds, like Bookmap, Rhythmic data feed, and the Denali feed can see it as well. So it's it's another game for them to play. You know, bait and law, or law and bait. I would say it was likely that that gets tagged, but I thought it was likely we were going to go through the M300 mark early in, and they made a fall out of me until they do their ramp much later, if they are going to do a ramp much later. see a scenario where you get a resting iceberg on ES and NQ at the same time. I'm sure that would fill me with a bit more belief. <laughs> do you do you ever look at the mm -hmm. Russell as well? No. Uh, lessons learned. <laughs> don't don't touch the beast that will <laughs> that will kill you for no reason whatsoever. It's, it's got a mind of its own. 
I do look at the YM in, in ETH correlations. I do look at the YM in RTH, but um, no. And some instruments have peculiarities. Gold is one <laughs> and Russell is one. Yeah, I, I agree. Russell's Russell's a tough one. I mean, gold. I'm very happy to hold it for days and days, months and months and months. But that's not really trading. That's more investment. Here we go. We're going to get it this time. Yeah. Let's see how much is actually there. As we do get it, it might be a nice way to end, <laughs> just to show that a large resting iceberg in NQ can be rather useful. That is as close as that's as close as filled, even though it didn't take it. Oh, they should hit it. Fifty-two. Gosh. But what they might do is that everybody there is jumping on board, thinking it's got to go up now. So they're going to they could do their nice little sweep down here first and then take it. Or we could just chop in a nice little range and then go. Or we've got a liquidity target down there that they could dip down to. You can see the pressure. Yeah, my little um, very short term algo telling me it was good for a short scalp there. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, it's really it dark there. Look at it. I mean, they, they could, you know, it's not liquidity until basically where that initiated. And yeah. they're really pushing that, that, on the offer there. Yeah, that, that is um, the definition of a tease, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so my very short term, short scalp algo would have done quite well there. So how, how many algos are you running? Um... Got at the moment, I've been testing about 12. I'm, I'm using about six of them. But they're in a semi-discretionary fashion, so I've got buttons to turn them on and off. I mean, one of the beauties of having Bookmap around is, uh, and everything else I've got, is um, you want to look at market structure, what's happening, and not run how it goes blindly. Right. I mean, the idea, I don't know whether the idea actually works or not, but the idea is to improve your probability based on on things that you wouldn't that, that normal algos wouldn't see because they're not watching what's happening in bookmap etc yeah i mean that's um it, it's kind of funny like, um the uh, w we were actually developing algos uh, uh high frequency algos uh, early on and then bookmap was just the way for visualizing the algo performance uh and then uh, yeah, I, remember, I remember the first user manual that you ever issued when um, your product was released yeah that, that was along those lines yeah yeah exactly and then uh it was like well if you show that we, we showed it to other traders and they said well if you made a, a platform out of that we'd we'd buy it here we go here we go that was like a sweep up nice vertical price line well that 60 popped in and then look at they pulled it now too I do. I do kind of like this. I didn't think I would like this uh, uh, liquidity uh, uh, map or uh, uh, numeric values there, but uh, no, it's it's interesting. He asked for some feedback. I, I've said one of the things I'd like is to be able to control the font or the transparency, or font and transparency. Yeah. Sometimes you want to you have a transparency slider so you can make it almost invisible because you're missing some of the price action underneath it. Yeah, exactly. And quickly turn them on and off, I guess. Yeah. I'm a great fan of the um, Elgato Stream Deck, you know, the sort of um, um, hardware-based keyboard with digital buttons. So you can you can have them do absolutely anything. Uh, it was one of the great teasers that one, wasn't it? 
my um, you probably heard another little um, piano riff. That was my um, my short term short scalp algo <laughs> again. It, it um, it's only it, um, on that one. It was only playing for about five points, but it got them. Let's see it, buyers. Let's see it. Two fifty four. Yeah, the DAX is doing nothing. Nothing really going on. But, you know, if the DAX was really beginning to push right now, I would say yes, we've got to pop this out. But Nasdaq and ES are doing this on their own. Mm. So that's just. Just how it goes in that market playing on their own. So, so that's where, like, you, in the extended hours, you, you just might, it's like, well, that's what I'm looking for, but it, then it just might take hours to, to play out. Well, you just have to be aware that you're not going to get as much force with one market playing on its own as you do with, you know, four markets playing together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you were trading that, Bruce, you, would you have taken some profit at that one though? If it, when it, what did it get to? It got to fifty-three. I would have taken profit. Yeah, I I, I likely would have. Um, I I'm just because it came shy uh, the first time. I think now it's going to trade through it. But uh, um, let's see if they pull that liquidity. But yeah, it's still I mean, it's still really dark below it though. You know, I want to see them push push below. These um big player markers in your um your depth R column. Um very interesting visually, but um you, yeah, you can see them move around. Kind of yeah. that's that's one of the reasons why I've got this column in there as yeah. well as the curve. Because I'd like to see them get out of the way. I'm just curious how big this iceberg is too. Okay, they've got out of the way this time. Yeah. They are not there. Now or never. Yeah, really. This this should be it. Wow. There we go. 22. It's only 22? <laughs> All of that? Or seven more? Yeah, yeah. No. Well, they're they're... Probably, uh, what they're probably doing, if it's going to go up, they're probably buying at the same time, not on Iceberg. But they're probably just buying in that zone. Or they could be doing the opposite. They could be selling. Who knows? Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. I know that's cool. Yeah, no, it was um, it was a fun hour and a half, Bruce. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Moby. Like, uh, uh, re really appreciate it. This was our, our first uh, first test of it. Uh, wasn't uh, um, advertised or anything, um, but uh, we'll we'll do it again and and we'll um, <clears throat> get uh, uh, David in here and and Yuri. I'm so sorry. I, I uh, or Dove. I wanted to get you uh, uh, mic'd up, and I, I don't know what's wrong with the permissions in there, but we'll get we'll get we'll do it again, um, and. Uh, uh, get it all set up and, and squared away uh, and more more formalized so um, yeah yeah thanks thanks very much Moby this was this was really great I mean this is uh, there's subtleties here in the in the uh, ETH that uh, uh, you know I, I I just don't trade it and it, you know I, I don't know about it um, so I mean the, what I have done um, is is uh, it, along the lines of some of the things you said how you know it, being stubborn and and uh, trading the eth is not good for your bank account um and, but there's so many different subtleties that you mentioned this was just uh this was fantastic we'll do it again yeah i i'd, I'd just say yeah don't be stubborn <laughs> i mean it can be very good for your bank account but don't, but don't be stubborn because they have the money and if they want to push any instrument 100 200 points in in that direction they can do yeah 
and, and, you, and you, you just you're used to seeing a pullback you know uh during during uh, uh you know new york uh but you just a lot of times you just won't get that um and uh, it just keeps grinding and keeps grinding and keeps grinding there's just no one selling it'll just keep going up or no one's buying it just keeps going down um but uh <laughs> anyway uh this is recorded i'll put it up uh um i gotta find a new place to put it um maybe special i think we have special events webinar uh playlist and we'll we'll pop it in there and uh uh, Moby, like, uh, we'll do a, a pro trader webinar with you as well. Uh, if you're game for doing something like that, uh, we can speak yeah, more about sure. it um, uh, mm -hmm. whenever whenever you're ready uh, and uh, uh, take it from there. But uh, yeah, yeah, thank. Uh, I'm happy to talk about you know, sort of more generic things as well that you've got to use in your trading. I mean, I'm not against. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I am very much in favor of. of um, I mean, my whole trading is all about auctions, um, but I'm happy to talk about. How I, um, how I understand auction market theory, volume profile, etc. But, but in ETH, I kind of do it on a smaller scale, lower time frame basis because of the um, the large moves. Yeah, no, it sounds great. I mean, uh, let's do it. Um, I'd love to hear uh, uh, what what do you have to say. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. We'll um, we'll let you um, hang. Up. I suppose I'll stop the stream and then you can hang it up. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks everybody. Uh, thanks, Moby, and uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll do it again another time. Bye, bye. Bye.